In this presentation, I will uh, show some preliminary, preliminary results we have obtained on uh, publication of a surface enhanced trauma scattering sensor based on uh, gallium nitride ultrafine membrane for detection of uh, micromolar range rhodamine B. So the work is done in collaboration with the uh, Joint Research Center of uh, European Union, European Commission. So as we know, there are many sources of contamination of uh, residual waters. Uh, for example, textile industry, pharma, oil industry, and uh, yeah, in fact, many, many other industries. And uh, one of the most abundant pollutant is uh, are the dyes. Also, the dyes can be used, as we know, in the food industry. And uh, it is important to have a regulation or regulation by law in order to, to, to not exceed some concentrations because uh, these dyes can, could be harmful for human health. So the methods to detect the presence of the concentration of the dyes in a specific solutions can be different. Uh, mostly it can be, can be used some colorimetric methods. However, if the dyes gets degraded in time, they can transform into some other molecules which, uh, which can also be harmful. So in order to detect them, um, one of the good candidates for, for this is uh, or are the SERS sensors, which can detect uh, um, a signal from the molecules uh, at very low concentration. So the material which we use in our work is gallium nitride, and gallium nitride uh, has some special properties like it's a uh, wet bang up semiconductor with a 3.4 electron volts. Uh, it's a direct transition semiconductor. It is um, chemically and physically stable. It supports heterostructuring. And it worth to mention, uh, that uh, this material also, also possess the um, piezoelectric, uh, piezoresistive uh, properties. And it is also a uh, biocompatible material as it was uh, proved by uh, uh, many research groups. So it is the second most important semiconductor of the silicon in the semiconductor industries. It is used for production of electronic components uh, due to its capability to work at high frequencies and uh, high power. Uh, it is used for production of sensors, different types of sensors, optical sensors, strain sensors, and so on. Uh, also for production of uh, optoelectronic components, for production of blue lasers, diodes, uh, lasers, uh, or for production of solar uh, solar panels or used in the laboratory or for special use, for example, in uh, uh, aerospatial uh, applications. So now looking on the application medicine, it is already uh, used as uh, parts or as a uh, hair thumbs in uh, prosthetics. It is used for muscle and nerve stimulators or uh, for fast recharging of electric wheelchair. wheelchair. So in diagnostic, it can be used for MRI or for colonoscopy. At the level of laboratory, it is also studied for tissue regeneration. But in this work, uh, our census is uh, fabricated on ultrafin membranes and uh, we produce these membranes in our laboratory by using the so-called surface charge lithography. And um, this can be done in two ways, using a standard photolithography approach. Here we have initially a gallium nitride wafer. Um, most of the grow on gallium nitride on, uh, on sapphire substrate. The process is followed by a 
simple lithographic stuff where we open some specific windows for different features. Um, and then the material is uh, treated with low energy ions, for example, in uh, with argon ions in a plasma system. But the disadvantage of this is a limitation, which is up to one, two micrometers. Another way is to use the focus ion beam, where uh, we are scanning a uh, desired pattern with uh, gallium ions uh, from the gallium source inside the field. In this case, we have a limitation up to few nanometers. And basically, during this step, we are inducing some uh, deep defect states into the material, which will trap the negative charges. And uh, these charges, or basically, generally to say the surface shell lithography is an approach based on direct writing of negative charges on the surface of a semiconductor. And uh, the charges will shield the material against photoelectrochemical etching uh, step, which is the next one. So in this uh, step, we use a potassium hydroxide solution uh, under setting conditions, and we are using a UV source um, and the focus it on the surface of the material. And as you can see from the images on the right, we have uh, now perforated membranes produced by focus ion beam and or continuous membranes produced by a simple lithographic uh, process. So I have to mention that the material which was treated with ions will stay chemically stable under these uh, etching uh, conditions. Now, <clears throat> Here, you can see a cross-sectional view of a, of a single membrane. So you can see the thickness is about 50 nanometers, 50, 15 nanometers, and it stays suspended on some gallium nitride nanowires, which are actually represent some free degrees locations in the bulk material. So they are also chemically stable during the etching process. We have also analyzed the Essence. And as you can see, the regions which were treated with uh, ions, argon or gallium ions, they uh, have the uh, yellow luminescence, as you can see also in the CL spectra, with uh, the with band at 2.2 electron volts corresponding to the yellow luminescence, and the second peak at 3.4 electron volts, which corresponds to free exciton transitions. Um, by using the transmission electron microscopy, we have also demonstrated that the material is a single crystalline good structure oriented along 110001 zone um, so axis. The quality of the material it is uh, as approved by uh, Rama Spectra. And in order to have a quantitative analysis on the chemical surface, we have performed the XPS analysis. As you can see in the initial gallium nitride wafer, we have uh, around 8% of oxygen. And uh, this uh, can be attributed to um, the native oxide layer. This was proved by looking at the, at the gallium 2P photo emission line. As you can see, there is a shift of about 0 0.7 electron volts to the higher binding energies, which, uh, which prove the, proves the oxidation state of the gallium. Now looking at the gallium nitride membrane, we also found around 7% of lead, which is uh, Contamination corresponds to contamination from the silver paste we used during the during the etching step, during the photoelectrochemical etching step, where we use it to contact the surface of material to the electrode. 
There is also a high concentration of oxygen around 23%. However, it's not related to the oxidation of gallium. It's just, uh, it represents only contamination from uh, hydroxyl groups as the sample was uh, deepened into a water solution. So now in order to fabricate the, our search sensors, we have the initial membrane. Uh, we are depositing a five nanometers gold layer, continuous gold layer in a spotter coating system. The sample is uh, thermally treated at 300 degrees. And uh, as a result, the thin layer, the thin gold layer gets coagulated into randomly distributed gold nanodots on the surface of the membrane. So in the end, looking at the performance of these sensors, we have found an enhancement factor of about 20 comparing the, the initial gallium nitride without functionalization and the, uh, and the functionalized one. So we use one micromolar rhodamine B in a ultra poor milliliter water for this experiment. And uh, yeah, the enhancement factor of about 20 was uh, determined by looking at the position 6048 centimeters minus one. And this enhancement is uh, the fact of the uh, excitation of the surface, surface plasmas and uh, enhancement of the electromagnetic field around the nanoparticles. So as a conclusion, we have fabricated these uh, search sensors. We have demonstrated the possibility to detect the rhodamine D in the micromolar range. The enhancement factor was about 20. And I have to mention that due to its high chemical stability, the sensor can also be used in acidic or basic condition, conditions for detection of our dust as well. And also, Due to its high conductivity because of the defects we induce into the material, it is also a good candidate for sensors which combine optical and electrical properties of the material. So also there are some needs of additional studies which are still in progress actually for determination of the detection limit uh, and also for other dyes and also to see the influence of the density of gold dots as, uh, as it has to be. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vlad, for your presentation, which is now open for discussions and comments. Please, if there are any questions. Okay, I have one question. In one of your previous first slides, you, wrote that you have limitation of two micrometers. After yeah. that, you are uh, presenting membranes with a thickness of 15 nanometers. Well, that was, a, that was an image in a, on the cross-sectional view. So I showed the thickness of the membrane. However, the, the limitation of one, two micrometers is a photolithographic uh, It's a limitation of photolithography. It's not depending on the thickness of the material we are obtaining. Ah, okay. Thank you.